Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. I'm out here working on some floor joists. We've got one up here on a pair of saw horses. And you can see that I peeled the bark off. I used an ax on part of it and a draw knife on part of it. You can do either or. Uh, when the bark is really thick, it makes it kind of hard to pull the bark off with a draw knife. So you can use an ax and I was just showing you that. But actually, this worked pretty well with a, just a draw knife. And I went on either end and while the log was sitting still, I made a mark with my level up to where I could tell by sighting down the length of the log if I would have some bearing there for the floor to actually sit on. And it's a good thing to look at your logs before you do anything to them. If there's a little bit of a curve in, in your log and you're getting ready to snap your lines to put the flat spot on the top of it, if that log has got much of a curve it's good to put that curve out to where it is parallel with your flat spot because if you turn that the crown of the log if you turn that straight up and you hew that off or you cut that off then in the middle of the log you're getting it a little bit too thin so you can keep more of the thickness of your floor joist if you put that to where you keep that that crown or that curve or that bend in your log I'm going to hew this one with the broad axe, just a flat spot. There won't be a lot of hewing to actually do, but you can do that, or you don't, you don't have to even use a broad axe. You can just use a single bit or double bit axe. What I'm going to do with my axe is just chop down pretty close to the line, and then I'll, it's, it would be just like juggling out a log, except I just, I'm just taking a little bitty bit off, just enough for the flat spot. I've got a knot here, and if you can see, I've gone the same direction with the axe, but I'm going to chop a little V and chop through this knot, because this knot actually pins the wood to the log around it, and when you're, if you're actually uh, hewing your wall logs out, you're going to run into that. You're going to find knots that you have to come in from both directions and sever the wood around that knot because you, it's hard, really hard to try to get that off of there with that knot actually holding the wood to the log. I've screwed this one before on here, onto the log and down onto the sawhorse. And I'm using that as a dog. I have one on either end. And if you can see, I brought the log out over the edge or the end of the sawhorse. So I can hew all the way down to the other sawhorse. And then I can unscrew this and set it back on the horse and then scoot the other end out and hew without any interference of, or any worries of hitting the end of the sawhorse. I'm checking the line that's on the bottom to make sure that I'm getting pretty close to it. So occasionally I'll, I'll look underneath to see how far away it is and then I'll come back and then shave off just a little bit till I get to that line and then I'll check it again to see how I'm doing. When you come up against a knot, sometimes the grain 
will change on you as you work around a knot or go past it. Uh, you can see coming up to it, it'll heal real clean, but as you go past, it wants to tear out. So sometimes you have to tilt your axe up so that you're actually working with the grain. I'll go on down the log a little bit and then I'll come back and I'll work that out. Get myself just a little bit of room. actually from the other direction. It helps to be where you, where you can be up above it a little bit better than what I actually am. You can come working yourself back towards the knot. And then you can go back to the knot and go right on through it. Check my line below. Okay, I'm at the point now to where I need to bring this out so that I can actually heal across this area without, I don't want to chop into my sawhorse. So what I'll do, I'll go back to the other end and I'll loosen my little dog and I'll scoot that back in and then I can take this one off and scoot it out and lock it back down. got this hewed on the top side flooring will actually sit on top of this now this is flat enough that you don't have to really do anything else to it this is this is pretty sweet but I have a big planer that I'll go down this with and just just clean it up actually I'll just be cleaning all the hewing off probably be some score marks left but you can do this for your floor joist if you want to go with round floor joist like I'm doing here and save some money now, I, I went to all the trouble, well, I shouldn't say trouble, it was a lot of fun, of hewing this with the broad axe. I also have some of these back here. I've, I've flattened the top of them with an Alaskan mill, and I'll show you how I do that. And it saves some time from actually going to the trouble to hew it out, but it makes it a little quicker, and you get a good flat surface also.